Good afternoon, everybody. We will start with the quiz. So I'm going to go over the quiz questions and uh, try to explain the points that many of you had problems with. This feedback is, of course, very important. Quiz, the reason why we have exams and quizzes is not to penalize you or to give you a hard time or to ruin you or whatever. It's just so that we have a feedback. That's why during the class I ask questions and I try to get feedback from you to adjust to repeat, to whatever, so that the, the course can be more effective and we can teach you better. That's the whole idea. So this quiz, of course, was very useful uh, to see what is understood and what is not and what is general problem. And of course, I am not very happy as a matter of fact, I'm not happy at all about the results. And I'm sure you are not happy as well. Okay. Uh, I was expecting that more was understood and uh, I had like, a better level of understanding of the course. So I have to now adjust what we are doing and hopefully we can improve. So our aim here is that when this course is finished, you should have a good understanding of linear algebra. This is not a number crunching course. So it's not a matter of just doing lots of multiplication and addition and these things. It's not that. Okay? This, this course is about understanding what is linear algebra. Okay? Because you will need this. I also saw that all my students are from four disciplines, electronics engineering, computer engineering, control engineering, and I think I have also some electrical engineering students. So all of you will need every bit and drop of what you learn in linear algebra in the rest of your career, especially as long as you are a student here, you will use every bit of it. So it's not like something you pass it and you are done with it, you will never see the rest of your life. It's not something like that. Okay? This, this course is a building block of your engineering education and engineering profession. So it is very, very important. Of course, one more dimension that I want to add to this class was that I want you to start thinking like a scientist, how does a scientist approach a problem he faces or she faces, okay? How do you approach problem solving in your professional life? Okay, how do you solve an unknown problem based on your knowledge on known problems, okay? That, I see that the high school education the way they prepared you to enter a university examination and enter university is not, unfortunately, in that line. So we have to somehow, together, we have to make an effort for that and break it. So you start thinking about really problem solving, not memorization. What I mean is that if you give you a slightly tilted question, other than just doing computation blindly, you shouldn't get into trouble. You should be able to look back sit back and look at the problem and say, okay, okay, this looks a bit different, but I know this, so how can I make this similar to what we already know? Okay, this should be the approach. That was missing in your exam. Unanimously, everybody was suffering from this deficiency. Okay, some did better than others. Some, did, some a few people did very badly. They couldn't even do the simplest questions. That was very sad. But hopefully, we will work on it together. Do not lose hope. You are all very smart people. You have the mental capacity and ability to achieve and to, do, to be successful in your career, in your life. So do not lose hope because of a bad grade you get. 
if you work on it in the next exam, you can just do the opposite of it. I can assure you of that. So therefore, with this in mind, I want to go over your quiz questions in this first, first part of today, in the first lecture. After the first lecture, we will continue our normal course coverage. OK, the first question was, I gave you so two questions here. I said x1 minus 2x2 is equal to 1, 2x1 plus x2 is equal to 7. And the other one was x1 minus 2x2 is equal to 1, 2x1 minus 4x2 is equal to 4. By the way, 75% of the question I asked was from the homework questions I gave you. So if you did your homework, you would have got 75 over 100. If you did it, and if you understood, even if you memorized it, right, you would be able to get 75 out of 100. So I am not collecting your homework. I am not going to collect them. But you should know that they are solving those solutions is important for you those homework solving those homeworks is important for you to learn and is important for your grade as well. I hope this this is now well understood after this quiz. Okay, I said please study this geometrically. This was just a gift to you, right? You just take this this x1, x2. So what are we trying to do? We'll just plot one equation. This is a x1, x2 in this two-dimensional plane. This is a line, isn't it? When x1 is 0, x2 is equal to minus 1 half. Okay. When x2 is 0, x1 is 1. So this is a line. So this is x1 minus 2x2 is equal to 1. All, these po all the points on this line satisfy the first equation. For any point on this, this equation is satisfied, right? And when you look at this one, so x1, when x1 is 0, x2 equal to 7. So it's like, let's say here, OK? And when x1 is, when x2 is 0, x1 is 7 over 2. So it is, let's say here, OK? So this is 7 over 2. This is 7. So this satisfies 2x1, x2 is equal to 7. So the second equation satisfies on this line, and the first equation satisfies on this line. So which x1 and x2 satisfies both? Right? This is the geometric interpretation. There is only one point, which is this point. Okay? This happens to be, I think, what was it? So x1 is 3 and 1. This is geometrically interpreted. Of course, for geometrically, in the exam, you cannot plot it accurately, so you cannot see it. But it's not difficult to see. So this is geometrically interpreted. You see that, OK, this has one solution. This is a line for the first equation. This is a line for the second equation. And this, this is where they intersect. Therefore, there is one solution. So what is that solution? You should answer that as well, right? So that's all. You just take x1 from here, right? x1 is equal to 1 plus 2x2. And substitute it here. 2, 1 plus 2x2 plus x2 is equal to 7. So 2 plus 4x2 plus, OK, this is. 2, right? So 5x2 is equal to 5x2 is equal to 1. And you substitute that here. x1 is equal to 3. That's it. That's all you need to do here. So when we come to the second equation, this is, of course, not the same. So when x1 is 0, it is the same equation here. So therefore, this is, first one is this line. So this is. 1, this is minus 1 half. The second one, so this is just twice this. Left-hand side is 
this same equation multiplied by 2. Okay? So when x1 is 0, x2 is minus 1. So when x1 is 0, x2 is minus 1. Okay? When x2 is 0, x1 is 2. Okay? So this is x1 minus 2x2 is equal to 1. This is 2x1 minus 4x2 is equal to 4. So this, this, all the points on this first line satisfy this equation. All the points in the second line satisfy this equation, but they never intersect. So there is no solution, isn't it? So this is the geometric interpretation. You don't need to find it. Of course, you could apply Gaussian elimination here as well, right? It's very easy answer, but that's not, not the idea. So this is fine. once you do this, you have 25 out of 100. So we have some people, they don't even get 25 in the whole exam. OK, any question on this? Geometrical interpretation of this equation, system of linear equations. Any question? Yes? Yeah, of course, that's still a count. It's not zero or one. You get some points. You get some points, but if you don't tell us what is the solution for such a simple equation, you don't expect to get full grade for that. Okay? Yes. Yes, I remember uh, even as for solution, um, the question was um, explain uh, geometrically. Yeah, explain the solution geometrically. So what is the solution? Oh, of course. I mean, we are talking about the solution. Explain what geometrically? So you are explaining this solution of what does this system equation mean, right? The whole meaning is the solution of this. Anyway, let's not argue the grade. If you have an objection to your grade, we can look at it afterwards. <laughs> okay, it might go up or down. If you make a mistake, we always correct it. <laughs> okay, but I'm just asking, do you have any question on the methodology, how we solve it? What it means? Any question on that? Okay, second question. So I gave you And I specifically said, hint, perform Gaussian elimination. I told you how to do it as well, right? So I said, perform Gaussian elimination and study the solution of this equation based on Q and T. So we have two parameters here, Q and T, OK? So Gaussian elimination is 1, 4, minus 2, 1, 1, 7, minus 6, 6, 0, 3, Q, and T, OK? So this is, of course, very simple. You cannot say that, OK, we are, he asked us to solve 3 by 3. This is just very simple, right? So this is our first pivot, subtracted first, subtract first equation from the second one. So 1, 4, minus 2, 1, 0, 3, <coughs> Minus 4, 5, 0, 3, Q, T. So this is, now first column is finished. Now we go to second. This is our second pivot. And we just subtract this from here. OK, what do we get? 1, 4, minus 2, 1, 0, 3, minus 4, 5, 0, 0. This is Q plus 4. And this is t minus 5. OK. This is it. So we finished our forward elimination. Now we want to see the solution. We start from the last equation, isn't it? So this is q plus 4 times z is equal to t minus 5 times t minus 5. That's it. So, if 
Q is different. Let's start from this one. If Q is Q plus four is different from zero, what can we say? What do you say in this case? If Q plus four is not zero, no problem, right? It becomes just an ordinary system of linear equations, right? You just find the solution, no matter what T is. Okay, so you have one solution. T can be anything, it can be five or six, or it doesn't matter, right? You have one solution. So the problem is, second option, if Q plus four is zero, then the equation becomes zero is equal to T minus five. So there is no Z involved in this third equation. So it doesn't matter what the other equation says if this has to be satisfied. Isn't it? All three equations have to be satisfied. This can only be satisfied when T is equal to five, right? So when, so if Q plus four is zero, then you have, we have solutions solutions if t is equal to 5. If t is different from 5, no solutions. So how many solutions do we have if t is equal to 5? Infinitely many solutions. Why? Because you have then three unknowns, x, y, z, and the last equation disappears. It just becomes zero, all the way zero, right? So you have x, y, z, and you have just two conditions on three parameters. Therefore, you can just take one of them as three parameters and solve the other two in terms of that. So you would have infinitely many solutions. So this is what I asked from you. And this was, again, an ex a homework question. So this was one of your homework questions, exactly. Hint wasn't there in the homework, I just edited it so that to make sure you don't get lost on how, to, how should I approach this problem, okay? Just five minutes solution, that's all. So third question was LU factorization, okay? So I gave you an A, zero, one, 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 zero to zero, minus one, zero, one, minus one, 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 minus one, one, two, okay. So I asked you, please find a new factorization of A in a possible manner, okay? So what happens here, many of, all of you almost realize this, that you cannot find a new decomposition of this matrix as is, right? You have to do a change, okay? You have to interchange, exchange first row, with the last one, okay? Some of you did change this and then, the, even those I accepted, okay? It doesn't matter. So you bring it to a form where LU decomposition can be performed, right? So the first thing is you multiply this. So we want to have LU, right? This is not possible, not possible because a11 is equal to zero, right? So we perform, and so we multiply A with a P, and this P would be this. You would exchange in one and four. So you zero, 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 one. Then second and third line would remain as they are, okay? This is P. So you would perform LU decomposition on this PA, right? So in the first part of the question, there is no equation, 
there is no b, there is no ax equal to b. Just I just wanted you to perform LU decomposition on this. Okay. So once you multiply this, so p a is equal to this, and this will change roles. Okay, some of you took this here and there. It doesn't matter. They are, that means you performed several of these. Okay, as long as in the second half of the question you do the same exchange in B, I accepted that, no problem. Okay, but the logical thing would be here. How does the algorithm work? You remember Gaussian elimination? You see, okay, this is zero, so the, I cannot use this as a pivot. Then what do you do? Let me go to the next line. Can I use this as a pivot? Said no. Okay, let me go to the next one. Can I use this as a pivot? Again, the answer is no. Okay, I can use this one. Then, oh, you bring it, you exchange these two things, okay? That's it. Of course, some of you did this. He just took and put it up here. That's okay. So, shifted everything down. It will give, as long as you reflect that with your P. Okay. Okay. So So there is nothing to do in the first column, right? This is our first pivot. We come here. Then what are we going to do? So this first line will, will remain as is. Second one again will remain as it is. Third one will be 0 0. So half of this will be subtracted from here, right? So this is becomes minus one, minus one half, so it becomes minus three over two. And this last one, one minus minus one becomes <coughs> two, right? Make sure we don't get lost. Half of this, right? Half of this. So this is zero min minus one, minus one half. So it is minus three over two. One. So this is plus three over two. Are you following? Everybody with me here? Okay. Yes. This is not. This is just minus one. This is zero here, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the last one, this is again. So this is, what is the multiplier here? Let, it is important that we record this. So this is L32, right? I'm going to use this where? In L, exactly as it is, right? L, so L is one. Half. Now also, I need to take care of this one. So what is L4, 2 is what? Again, it is 1 half. Right? So this becomes 0, 0. And what is this? This again, 1. And this is 3 over 2. OK? Now. So this column is finished. Again, Gaussian elimination, what, the, what does it require? I come to the next column, right? So this is my next pivot. So what is the multiplier? I will take care of this one. So L, yeah, 4, 3 is equal to 1 over minus 1. So it is minus 1. So the result is 1 minus 1, 1, 2, 0, 2, 0 minus 1, 0, 0, minus 1, 3 over 2, 0, 0, 1, 3 over 2. 
zero, zero, okay, excuse me, zero, zero, then this is what? Three over two minus, so plus three over two, so it is three, it's just three. So I am done with the forward element. So what is this? This is U. What is L? L just, you just write it here. One, zero, zero, zero. Okay, this is one, zero, zero. One, zero, and one. And this is zero, 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 because we did not need any multipliers there, right? So what is L32? It is exactly? This, one half. And this is, again, one half, and this is minus one. Just like that. So, you spend half of the exam, majority of you, trying to, you first obtain E's, and try to obtain the inverse of E's, and try to multiply E's. We explained this, we did examples on this, several examples, right? That's it. This is L, and this is U. Finished. That's question. That's end of first part of the question. Is it clear? And this was also in the videotapes, right? So everything we do here is it's recorded, and you can always watch it at your comfort in the middle of the night whenever it's available in YouTube. Okay. So the second part of the question, I did not link it to the first part. I said if they have a problem with LU decomposition, they should still be able to solve it. Okay. I don't want them to lose the entire question. So therefore, I asked this given. So of course, smart thing to do is to use LU decomposition, isn't it? I said, given B is equal to minus 1, 1, minus 3, 1, find the solution of AX is equal to B. So, of course, I will use LU decomposition. So, I take the same P, right? Multiply both sides with it. So, PAX is equal to PB. So, this PA, PA we already obtained LU decomposition. So, PA is equal to LUX to PB. PB means you just exchange these two numbers, right? So PB is 1, 1, minus 3, and minus 1. So we call this Y. Okay, so this becomes LY is equal to PB. And after we solve this, we will say that UX is equal to Y in two steps. So L, L is already there. So L, L, Y is equal to 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 half, 1, 0, 0, 1 half, minus 1, 1, times Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4 is equal to PB. So it is this, 1, 1, minus 3, and minus 1. So we start from here, top down, right? So first equation will give me y1 is equal to 1. Second equation will give me y2 is equal to 1. Third equation will give me 1 half y2 plus y3 is equal to minus 3. And the last equation will give me 1 half y2 minus y3 plus y4 is equal to minus 1. So you use this here. y3 is equal to minus 3 minus 1 half y2. So minus 3 minus 1 half, that is minus 7 over 2. And from here, y4 is equal to minus 1 minus 1 half y2 plus y3, that's equal to minus 1, minus 1 half y2 is 1, and this is minus 
7 over 2, so this is minus 5. So you have y is equal to 1, 1 minus 7 over 2 and minus 5. Then we take this y and just use this. So ux, ux is equal to, this is 1, minus 1, 1, 2, 0, 2, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, minus 1, 3 over 2, 0, 0, 0, 3 is equal to 1, so this is x1, x2, x3, x4 is equal to 1, 1, minus 7 over 2, minus 5. So what do we have? We start this time from bottom up, like backward substitution. So we start from last equation is 3x4 is equal to minus 5, therefore x4 is equal to minus 5 over 3. You go to one line above, what is this? Minus x3 plus 3 over 2 x4 is equal to minus 7 over 2. x3 to the other side and this other side, x3 is equal to 7 over 2 plus 3 over 2 x4, which is 7 over 2 plus 3 over 2 times minus 5 over 3. So you have 7 minus 5 over 2, which is minus 1. So where did I make a mistake? Yeah, this is, of course, plus 7 minus 5 is not minus, it is 2. Okay, so x3 is 1. x3 is equal to 1. And the first equation, let me just clean here. So x1 minus x2 plus x3 plus 2x4 is equal to 1. So take all everything to the other side. x1 is equal to 1 minus plus x2 minus x3 minus 2x4. Therefore, 1 plus x2. I didn't, I didn't calculate x2 yet, right? So 2x2 minus x4 is equal to 1. 2x2 is equal to 1 plus x4. Therefore, 1 plus minus 5 over 3. So this is 3 minus 5 over 3. So this is minus 2 over 3. Excuse me? Divided by 2, right. This is 2x2, so 2x2 is equal to this one. So x2 is equal to minus 1 over 3. Okay? So when you substitute that here, so 1 plus x plus 2, so this is minus 1 over 3, minus x3, so this is minus 1. Minus 2x4, so minus 2x4 is minus 5 over 3, okay? So this is, this cancels. So minus 1 plus 10 over 3, that is <coughs> 9 over 3, 
that is 3. x1 is 3. So that's it. Of course, I realize that you can make calculation errors, so that doesn't really matter that much in my exams. Okay? I, of course, it's not like you do everything right, but it doesn't kill you. I always go through the calculation if there is something wrong. Yes? Sure. That's why I said I just second part of the question, I didn't say use LU decomposition. Okay? You could just start, but you would do all, everything all over again, right? You would do the, all this row. So everything you did, you would have to repeat it. So it wouldn't be very respectable, but I would accept your answer. And some people did it. I, I didn't penalize them for that. But once... That would mean you didn't understand what LU decomposition is for, OK? OK, any question on LU decomposition? I want to stop here, and this is an important topic. So is everything now clear? Yes. So don't we have to write E to equal to E equal to E? No, because that was the way we proved it. Remember, we developed this methodology. That was the way we looked at it. We said, this is what you do. We looked at this, all these Gaussian elimination steps. We said, this corresponds to multiplying this line. With, first, we calculate the multiplier. They say, you multiply this line with this multiplier, subtract it from that line. That meant that had a corresponding E, right? Then we said, so whole thing can be looked at as multiplying by matrices from left, one after another, a series of matrices. Then they said, finding the entire matrix is messy, and it is not a simple thing. Then we said, how about we go back from the solution? We first obtain U, and step by step, when we go back, we observe that there is a beautiful property that you can just put here L21, L31, L41, L32, etc. You can just once you know the multiplier, just store them somewhere, just place them in the matrix. No computation is needed. L is there, free. Okay? This is very important. You know how to co compute now L? You don't need to multiply any E's or anything. Once you have your multipliers, you just place them here. L, let me write it. So when you are obtaining A is equal to LU, so this is the upper triangular matrix, L is just 1, 0, 0, okay, L, 2, 1, 1, 0, L, 3, 1, L, 3, 2, 1, okay, L, 4, 1. That is the whole beauty of the thing, okay? That's the whole thing. So you don't need to do any computation. Once you, you are already computing this thing, it's just coming to you free of charge. It's a gift. That's the whole beauty of LU decomposition. And uh, remember why, why LD, LU decomposition is useful? It's not just to solve one system of linear equation, isn't it? It's useful, for example, if you want to obtain the inverse of you have, let's say you have LU decomposition of a matrix, and you want to compute the inverse of it. What would you do? You would just take, I gave you this explanation, I remember. Let's say you have AX is equal to B, okay? A and B are given, right? These are given, these are, this is given. It could be a case that a is like your system, and B is like your input. Okay, the same system as it is, it stays as it is, but input might change. It is, it's like B1, okay, then the output, let's say, is X. So corresponding output would be X1. And in, in the next time slot, the input is different. Right? 
then the corresponding output would be also different. So when you have LU decomposition of A, you don't need to solve it all over again. You already have LU decomposition. You just implement back substitution, forward substitution, and back substitution, and obtain the solution very easily. Think of that A is like 1 million by 1 million matrix. Okay, don't think of it always 3 by 3 or 4 by 4. It could be very, very, very large size matrices, okay? In neural networks, in artificial intelligence, in linear programming, in many, many things, game theory, matrices are all around, everywhere, okay? You will always face this problem. So we are very careful that we want to have the best Algorithm. What does best algorithm mean? The algorithm that requires the least amount of computation. Okay? So you don't do the things all over again. Another application I told you, let's say you have a matrix A and you would like to compute A inverse such that this is the case, right? We talked about Gauss-Jordan method. Another method could be using LU decomposition, right? You could say, say that, okay, I can look at this. AX is equal to identity. So what does this mean? You can look, just look at each column of this. Like this is XC1, this is a vector. This is second column. This is end column. And this is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, etc. Right? This identity, the columns of identity. You can just now take a x c one is equal to one zero 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 right a zero one. I am not saying you do it this way, but if you already have the LU decomposition of a matrix, you could use it as well to obtain the inverse of a matrix. So you can solve n system of linear equations with b becoming one of these every time b changing. Okay. But you, since you already have a little composition once, a little composition does not depend on B, right? It's just on A. So you can perform a little composition once and solve this N system of linear equation, you have the solution, okay? So you should know a little composition very well. Of course, I don't want to confuse you. Normally, the best way to compute inverse is as follows. You you are given an A, right? You form this extended matrix side by side. You perform many operations on this, Gaussian elimination operations. You go forward all the way, then you go backward, and you arrive at the form where this is I and X. And this X is A inverse. How did you prove that? Again, all the Gaussian elimination steps you perform, let's be one million of them, they are E. So E1 multiply E2, E3, E4, etc. Right? Total of them, we can call them E times AI is equal to. So you can just take this E inside, this becomes. E times A, and this is E is equal to I and X. So this, this tells you that this first block is this second block is X. So this tells you that by definition, this is the definition of inverse. That means E is A inverse. Therefore, this X, since it's equal to E, that means X is A inverse. So you don't need to keep track of these things. You just perform this operation. Whatever junk appears here, this proves to you that that is the inverse of A. OK? That's as simple as that. Very beautiful. Last question. And this is the simplest one. And nobody did it fully and made me happy. Okay, I said given a matrix A, I will use the exact same word. If there is a given 
A, if there is an x different from 0 such that A, x is equal to 0. OK? Then A does not have an inverse. OK? Then A does not have an inverse. OK? So prove this. How do you prove this? I did this in class. I did a few times. Okay. This is what you say, proof by contradiction. We say, OK, let's assume the opposite. Meaning, OK, let's say a x is equal to 0. x is different from 0. And a inverse exists, right? If it exists, then what do I do? Since, since assume, so proof by contradiction. Proof by contradiction. Assume AX is equal to 0, X different from 0, right? And assume A inverse exists. A inverse exists. What does it mean? A inverse times A is equal to A times A inverse equal to identity. That's what it means. Right? Identity, again, is... 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. So this is all 1, and everything else is in diagonal is 1. Everything else is 0, right? So you cannot memorize it. You have to understand this. So please do not write. You already have it in your notes. But just be with me here. You have to understand the logic here. Whereas what we are saying is that ax is equal to 0. So there is a non-zero vector. So it's not all 0, 0, 0. There is at least one element in it that's not 0. And you multiply it by A, and the result is 0. If there is such a thing, you cannot have A inverse. A, A inverse does not exist. That's what we are claiming in the question, right? Say, so, OK, let's assume if it existed, what would happen? What kind of trouble would appear, right? If it exists, that means this is true, right? This is, definition of, this is the definition of inverse. Inverse exists means this exists. So therefore, we take this. Very simple. OK? Say, let me multiply this, both sides of this, by A inverse. So what do you have? A inverse A, x is equal to A inverse 0. Of course, this is 0 vector, right? This is vector. So what is A inverse times A? Identity, right? Identity times x, this is any matrix multiplied with 0 is 0. So identity x is x. This is, so this is x. Is, so you assumed x is different from 0. OK? And you assumed, of course, a inverse exists. And you arrived at a, x has to be 0. So it's contradiction. What does it mean? So what, what does it mean? Contradiction means what? This means that. Either of the two things are, cannot be true. Either x cannot be 0. You cannot have x equal to 0 and a inverse exists. Therefore, the opposite is true. Meaning, if x is, equal to, if x is different from 0, you cannot have an a inverse. That's what it means. OK? Yes? How can you? Okay, of course, I mean, you can prove this maybe 1,000 different ways, but this is the way I prove it. If you have a different suggestion, I will be happy to listen to you. Uh, actually, I wrote that AX equals to 0, and when X not uh, 0, so A have to be 0. Yes. Uh, so it's not How do you say that? Based on what? No, uh, if we say that X is not 0, in this equation, we have to say that A is 0. Why? Because this is not numbers, huh? Another thing, huh? Thank you very much. So this, and look, guys and girls, <laughs> in the exam, if I see in the final something like this, okay, if I see something like this, 
x is equal to b over a, okay, for a matrix. You fail, even if you get 50 or 100 or what, I don't care, like I, the story I told you. An electrical engineer you cannot write v is equal to r minus i, right? So if after taking this class for whole semester, in the final, you do what you did in this exam, and you divide by matrices like that, you fail, okay? I will fail you, I swear. You will fail the course, okay? You have to know. If you don't know that you cannot divide by a matrix at the end of this course, you have to repeat this, okay? So this is very, very important, okay? So I'm not saying you said this, okay? I don't remember your paper. Yes? What? If scalar, you mean? Scalar division, of course. You can divide by scalars. One, two, three, whatever, but you cannot divide by matrices. Okay? <laughs> yes? So, uh, zero matrix, of course, doesn't have an inverse, but what this is is that this is a singular matrix. We call this a singular matrix. So this is the definition of a singular matrix, meaning if there, any, there exists an x, the uh, non-zero vector x such that ax is equal to zero, that matrix is called singular matrix. So singular matrices, if we prove here that singular matrices cannot have an inverse, okay? So let now repeat your uh, solution. I hope you didn't mean this. No. So, so a times x equal to zero does not mean a is zero. Okay? Does not mean that. For exa example, let me give you an example. For example, 0, 1, 0, 2. This is matrix A, right? Okay? Let me just write in X, for example, 1, 0. What is the result? 0, 0, right? So you have an A that is not a zero matrix. You have an X. That's not zero vector, but their multiplication is zero. And how many different ways you can have this? Many, many different ways. You can have many x's here uh, that will give you that, okay? So a times x equal to zero does not mean a is zero. It means it is singular. This is the proof that a singular matrix cannot have, this is the beauty of mathematics without going through any elements, yeah? just from the definition of it, and just using this fact, you are able to prove that a singular matrix does not, cannot have an inverse, period. That's it. So why did everybody run away from the first two rows? <laughs> you were afraid that I was gonna <laughs> do something bad? Abdul Fattah is not afraid. <laughs> okay. okay. Is this clear? So you have it in the videotape, you have it now again in the videotape. I explained this several times. Of course, in the future exams, you will again have, I will ask you to prove things. Because proving things means you understand it, okay? So what was, the second part is even simpler. So I gave you G is equal to zero, F, so I, F, zero, I. And I told you that, I gave you also G inverse as well. I minus F, zero, I. I asked you to prove this, meaning multiply this guy. Multiply it, man, that's, that's it. So G times G inverse has to be identity, right? If this checks, that's the proof. So this is direct proof. You just multiply them out, right? So. G times G inverse is I, F, zero, I. And I also told you about block multiplication of matrices when we talked about matrix multiplication. So this times that is I times I. And some people write I square. I swear don't do that, okay? <laughs> don't write I square, please. <laughs> Plus F times zero. And this is, okay, 
minus f plus f. And this one is 0 times i plus i times 0. And this is 0 times minus f plus. So what do you have? This is 0, this is 0, this is i, and this is i i, 0, 0, i, which is i, right? So, so this first part of the this, uh, part b is just multiplication in half a minute, you get the result. Second part, I just want you to generalize this. I said, if you have an h, a, f, 0, b, and a and B has inverses, right? So A times A inverse is equal to identity. B times B inverse is equal to identity. So you have this, OK? I, this time I asked you to, to derive the formula, OK? Using, of course, you will use the first part. So what do you do? You just take here H is equal to A F 0 B just a zero zero i. Then here you have uh, i a inverse f zero i, and here you have b inverse. times i 0 0 b right so you multiply this you will you will get this one so you multiply the first row this is if you multiply this first row with a so this becomes a this becomes a and a inverse becomes identity and if second column you multiply with b so this becomes B inverse disappears, and you have B here. So therefore, this is like multiplication of three matrices. So if you have X, Y, Z inverse, what is this? Z inverse, then Y inverse, X inverse, right? So what is H inverse? Is inverse of this. Inverse of the second one and inverse of the first one. So, okay, what is this? This is the first part, right? I gave you the answer. Even if you couldn't prove it, you could use it. Okay, you just here, you have the same thing, just a minus comes there. This is again how mathematics work. You just use previous known steps, just exactly use them there. Okay, this A inverse, zero, zero, inverse of identity is identity, and this is zero, zero, B inverse. Okay? So what do you have? H inverse is, if you multiply this, this means the first column will be multiplied by A inverse, okay? And this tells you that second row will be multiplied by B inverse. So you would have A inverse, then minus A inverse F B inverse, zero, B inverse. That's it. <laughs> Just a little bit of thinking, that's all I, I asked for. Okay, any questions? Yes. First part. Just multiply, this is just direct verification. 
This one. So I just said, let me take, let me factor out this A00i, okay? So multiplication of these two things is like, you multiply with this, what do you have? The first block, you multiply, A he will come here, A, A inverse will come here, right? They will cancel. This time just zero and I. Okay, this bar tells you that multiply the second block column with B. It would cancel B inverse B would be identity and you would have B here. So I just factored out these things so that I have that structure, okay? So I know how to do that. So I just try to form such a unit there. Then I know how to, what is the inverse of it from the first question, okay? Any other questions? Yes. This one, okay? Let me explain that more. It's very important that you ask when you don't understand something. So I'm glad you are asking. So we have there A, F, zero, B, right? I want to write this as multiplication of two matrices, okay? where I want to have here identity, okay? And here I will have B. So what I'm saying is that let me get, uh, if I multiply with a matrix like this, okay? What will be the result? Let me just, what will be the result of this? This is, let me say, A inverse F and zero. So how do you multiply this? The first thing will be A times identity plus zero times zero, right? The second one, A, in, A times A inverse F plus right? zero times B. This will be zero times identity plus identity times zero, and this is going to be what? identity times A inverse. Uh, well, this is zero. Zero times A inverse F plus identity times B. Okay? What, what's going to be now? A, this identity, right? F, and this will be zero, this will be B. So I'm factoring out this, and I already said that A inverse exists. In the question, I said that A inverse and B inverse exists. Otherwise, I couldn't do this, right? And I did the same thing for B from the other side. Okay? Any other questions? Let's break for 10 minutes. So we we'll start at 1.45. So last week, we talked about vector spaces. And what were the different names for vector spaces? We said linear vector spaces, or linear spaces, or vector space. So they all mean the same thing. So don't get confused. So we continue our vector spaces topic. So I'm not going to repeat all the uh, axioms for being a vector space, but I'm, what I'm going to tell you is that basically, you, if you have a set of elements, let's say V1, V2, Vn, in a set V, if this set includes a zero vector, and if for any V, I plus Vj, the result is a member of this same set, any linear <coughs> combination of them, alpha Vi plus, then you have, of course, you have many other conditions, but basically these are the, the most determining parameters of a vector space. Then you have 
such a such a set is called vector space. So vector spaces are defined over fields. Fields, when I talk about fields, you just remember real number system, complex number system, or, or binary number system with uh, modular arithmetic, etc. And I gave you several examples of vector spaces. Do you have any question on the examples we did last week or any question on vector spaces, linear vector spaces? Let me give you another example. Let's say set of the set of uh, three by three matrices. Is this a vector space? Hmm? Okay, who says yes, who says no? Let me see this yeses. Okay, who says no? No. You say no? The answer is yes. Okay? Okay, the reason is this. So what, so this is what we are talking about. So A11, A12, A13, A21, A22, a23, A31, A32, A33. Okay? These three by three matrices. So we need to. So does this set have a zero element? What is the zero element? It is a zero matrix, right? So it has a zero element. So zero, three by three, zero matrix is the zero of this vector space candidate, let's say. Okay? If you add two three by three matrices, do you get a three by three matrix? Yes. Okay. If you take linear combination of two three by three matrices, do you get the three by three matrix? Yes. So therefore, it's obviously a three. It's a it's a vector space. Okay. So it is a matter of fact very similar to R what. So we have, we know what's R one. R one is just real line, isn't it? What is R two? It's a two dimensional <coughs> space, isn't it? X, Y, we call it, right? It's two-dimensional space. R3 is the world we live in, three-dimensional space. So this is, this is similar to what? How many parameters do you have here? In R1, you have like a vector is, a vector is just one element, right? It is X. In R2, so we have X and Y. R3, you have x, y, z. In Rn, you have v is equal to x1, x2, xn, right? This, how many parameters does it have? It has nine parameters. So it has some uh, similarity with R9, isn't it? But this also has uh, some two-dimensional properties. So this this becoming on this diagonal and this becoming symmetric location, etc. It has many implications that we are studying in this course. This whole course is about studying matrices, right? So then we can talk about how about the set of upper triangular matrices. Is this a vector space? The set of upper triangular meaning meaning a is equal to A11, set of A12, A1n, 0, A22, etc., A32, A33, etc. Okay? Below diagonal is, is this a vector space? Hmm? Excuse me? This is a set defined over the field of real numbers. Of course, it can be anything. It's a vector, yes. It's a vector space, yes? So these A's, I didn't, I didn't define any other condition, right? Yes, these A's can be any number. Therefore, zero is there. If you add two triangular matrices, you get another, again, a triangular matrix, etc. How about 
the set of symmetric matrices. Is this a vector space? What is a symmetric matrix? Symmetric matrix means this. OK. A i j is equal to a j i. Example, minus 1, 2, 3, 2, 0, 5, um, 3, 5, 6. This is a symmetric matrix. So this and this and this and this and this and this are equal. OK? OK. How about the set of L's? that in LU decomposition, are these a vector space? Do they form a vector space? No, isn't it? Because why? It violates every condition. Zero is not a member of this set. If you add two matrices like this, you do not have ones here, right? They become two. So therefore, conditions for being a vector space are not satisfied. So therefore, uh, being a vector space is a very nice property to have. And it's not <coughs> like everything is a vector space. So don't be mistaken. So everything is not a vector space. I told you also, this example, let me just mention this again. Let's say I have AX is equal to B, OK? Let's say this has many solutions, OK? Let's say this has infinitely many solutions. It can happen, right? In the exam, the question, if q is equal to minus 4, if you remember, and t is equal to 5, you had infinitely many solutions, isn't it? So assume something. Say, assume this has infinitely many solutions. So the solutions, these x's, are they, do they form a vector space? So let's, let's say x and y, they both satisfy this, and z and so infinitely many solutions. Do you have is x, y, z, etc. do they form a vector space? What is the answer? What do you think? Just yes or no? Yes. Do they form a vector? Who says no? Why not? OK. Zero is not, right? So the, this set does not have a zero. x equal to zero is not a solution. x equal to zero is a solution only if b is zero, right? Also, as he said, there is no guarantee if x is a solution, minus x is not a solution. If x is a solution, y is a solution, x plus y does not have to be a solution. So it violates, again, every uh, condition for being a vector space, right? So this is not, no. How about, let's take this one, ax is equal to 0, OK? Assume it has many solutions, meaning ax equal to 0, ay equal to 0. So there are many, many solutions, OK? Are these solutions a vector space? OK? Are they vector space or not? Yes. Who said yes? OK. Why? 
Zero is there, right? Zero is the solution of this, obviously, right? What else? Is that enough to be a vector space? What else? No, it doesn't have to have an identity. You see, this is a vector space for the following reason. If you have, if you have ax equal to zero, ay is equal to zero, you just add these two together, right? Side by side, you have ax plus ay is equal to zero. You just take common. So that means x plus y also satisfies it. So if you have if x satisfies this, y satisfies x plus y also satisfies this. Okay? As a matter of fact, any linear combination of x and y also is zero. Why? You just a alpha x plus b beta y is equal to zero. So therefore, a alpha ax plus beta by. So this is zero, this is zero, right? So therefore, this is satisfied. So this is called the null space of A. It is a vector space, right? OK. Let V be a vector space. Uh, v1, V2, Vn are called linearly independent. When? What was the definition? Remember? What was the definition of linear independence? If has only one solution alpha one equal to alpha two. Okay, there is no other solution than <coughs> this. Okay. So let me talk about linear independence of vectors. Let's let's talk about uh, so P two X. Let's talk about let me call it P two. P two the set of set of second order polynomials. Is this a vector space? Set of second order polynomials. Is it a vector space? Is, is zero the, the set of polynomials with at least uh, at most uh, degree two, okay? Is this a vector space? Yes, right? So zero, zero is there. It's a second, it's, a, it's, it's included in this set, right? It, has, it doesn't have a degree higher than two, okay? So any first order polynomial is in that set. Any second order polynomial is in that set, right? So it is, is a vector space. If I give you, let's say I give you P1x is equal to x, 2x, P2x is equal to 1 minus x squared. Are these two linearly independent? Okay. So how do, how do I answer? Are these two vectors? <coughs> these are vectors. Vectors linearly independent. Okay. 
Are they linearly independent? So what do we do? We just apply the definition, right? So we say alpha 1 times P1 of x, alpha 2 times P2 of x. This must be equal to 0. 0 polynomial, right? Meaning for every x, it is 0. That's what it means. Okay, we are not, so don't get confused. This means functional equality, meaning for every x, they are equal. They are called identical, right? So we are not trying to find the x that satisfies this. The different thing. So, alpha times p1 is what? Alpha times 2x, alpha, uh, alpha 1. Alpha 2 times p2x is 1 minus x squared. So, what is this? Let's just, so 0 term is alpha 2 plus alpha 1, 2 alpha 1, x minus alpha 2 x squared. I want this to be zero polynomial, right? So when can I have this zero polynomial? What are the solutions? Hmm? So which, what is the solution of this? When can this be zero? When is a polynomial zero polynomial? If, if all coefficients of the polynomial are zero, right? If all coefficients, if I give you a polynomial, a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus anx to the n equal to 0, as a matter of fact, we put 3 here, right, to say it's identical. When is this 0? When a0, a1, an, all 0. When all, all of these are 0, that means it is the 0 polynomial. Right? So, in that case, when is this polynomial 0? That requires the coefficient of, it's so a constant coefficient, alpha 2 has to be 0, and coefficient of x, 2 alpha 1 has to be 0, and minus alpha 2 has to be 0. That means alpha 1 and alpha 2 both have to be 0. There is no other solution. That means these two polynomials are linearly independent. Right? Okay, how about I introduce another polynomial in the set? Okay, I take the same set. So you have there p1 x is equal to 2x, p2 x is equal to 1 minus x squared. So I introduce now here p0 x is equal to 1, let's say. Okay, are these Three vectors linearly independent. Is everybody following? So here we are talking about vectors that are polynomials, right? So I am giving you this example so that you don't think that vectors are always columns or rows. So they can be just polynomials as well. It's a, I gave you also a vector space that the vectors are matrices. Okay, so they can be anything as long as they satisfy the axioms. The definition of being a vector space, it's a vector space. So are these three vectors linearly independent? So what is the condition? Alpha 0, P0, alpha 1, P1, alpha 2, P2 has to be equal to 0, right? 0 vector. So alpha 0 times 1 plus alpha 1 times 2x plus alpha 2 times 1 minus x squared equal to 0. So you have here alpha 0 <coughs> plus alpha 2. This is the constant term. Then you have 2 alpha 1 x. Then you have minus alpha 2 x squared. You have to have alpha 0 plus alpha 2 has to be 0. 2 alpha 1 has to be 0 minus alpha 2 has to be 0. So from here, alpha 2, this is the only solution, is 0, alpha 1 is 0, alpha 0 is 0. Okay? So again, these three vectors are linearly independent. Okay, let me introduce one more. How about I say P3 is equal to 
2x plus 1 or 2x plus 5, okay, or 3x plus 5. Is this set of four vectors linearly independent? Do you think it is linearly independent? Okay, let's see. So alpha 0, p0, okay, alpha 1, p1, alpha 2, p2, alpha 3, p3 has to be equal to 0. So this is alpha 0 times 1, alpha 1 times 2x, alpha 2 times 1 minus x squared, alpha 3 times 3x plus 5 equal to 0. Okay? So constant term. What do I have now? Alpha 0, then alpha 2, and 5, alpha 3. And coefficient of x, 2 alpha 1 plus 3 alpha 3 x. x squared minus alpha 2 x squared. Okay. So from here again, every coefficient has to be 0, right? So minus alpha 2 has to be 0. That means alpha 2 has to be 0. And 2 alpha 1 plus 3 alpha 3 has to be 0. Alpha 0 plus alpha 2 plus 5 alpha 3 has to be 0. Okay? So this alpha 2 was 0, so I can erase this. So you have alpha 0 plus 5 alpha 3 equal to 0. So that means alpha 0 is equal to minus 5 alpha 3. And alpha 1 is equal to minus 3 over 2 alpha 3. So how many solutions does this have? Infinitely many, right? So alpha 3 becomes a parameter. So this equation, the only solution of this equation, of course, alpha 0, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, all becoming 0 is a solution. But it's not the only solution, right? It's always a solution, of course. So we found that this set of vectors is not linearly independent, okay? Meaning this equation has a so at least one solution that is different from all of them being zero. As a matter of we found out that we have infinitely many solutions, okay? So if you take alpha 3, so you just take, say, take the coefficient of this zero and Whatever is this one, okay? Should we check this? See if it's satisfied? Of course, it will be satisfied, but let's just. So this alpha 0 is, so minus 5 times alpha 3 times what? P0 is 1, okay? <coughs> Plus alpha 1, what is alpha 1, right? Alpha 1. <laughs> plus alpha 1 times, so alpha 1 is minus 3 over 2 alpha 3 times 2x, okay? And alpha 3 is just anything you want. Alpha 3 times 3x plus 5. So this is equal to what? So constant term, what do you have here? Minus 5 alpha 3. And what do you have from here? 5 alpha 3, right? This is constant term. The coefficient of x, so from here you have minus 3. And from here you have plus 3. And this is x. As you see, this is just 0. So you have infinitely many solutions. So this is linear independence and let's also do something with matrices. I didn't use any chalk today, so let me go back to good old chalks. Let's take example 
x1 is equal to 1, 2, x2 is equal to 3, 4. Okay? So this is R2, right? Two dimensional vector space that we are familiar with. Are these two vectors linearly independent? Okay? So we did polynomial, now we are doing columns, right? It doesn't matter, it's the same thing. So alpha times alpha 1 times x1 plus alpha 2 times x2 equal to 0. Is, set, is this satisfied only for alpha 1 and alpha 2 both being 0? Okay? That's, that's what we want to know. Is, this, is that the only solution? That's obviously a solution, isn't it? When you make this 0 and that 0, the result is of course 0. So, alpha 1 times 1, 2, <coughs> alpha 2 times 3, 4 is equal to, what do you have here? Alpha 1 plus 3 alpha 2. 2 alpha 1 plus 4 alpha 2 equal to 0, 0. This is the 0 vector, right? So, what do we have? So, alpha 1 from the first equation is minus 3 alpha 2. You substitute in the second one, you have 2 times minus 3 alpha 2 plus 4 alpha 2 is equal to 0. That means minus 2 alpha 2 is equal to 0, alpha 2 is equal to 0, and therefore alpha 1 is equal to 0. There is no other solution. So therefore, these two vectors are linearly independent. How about I take the same set like I did in that example. So x1 is equal to 1, 2. x2 is equal to 3, 4. And I introduce x3 is equal to, let's say, minus 1, plus 1. Okay? Anything. Do you think these three vectors are linearly independent? So they are not, but let's see why they are not, okay? So alpha 1, x1, so you will have this kind of questions, okay? You should be very much familiar with how to check linear independence of given vector set, okay? Plus alpha 2, x2, plus alpha 3, x3 is equal to 0. That means alpha 1, 1, 2, plus alpha 2, 3, 4, plus alpha 3, minus 1, 1, 0, 0, right? So alpha 1 plus 3 alpha 2 minus alpha 3 is equal to 0. 2 alpha 1 plus 4 alpha 2 minus alpha 3 is equal to 0. As you see here, you have two equations and three unknowns, right? Let's just use Gaussian elimination here. One, three, minus one. The other side is zero. Two, four, one. Okay. So this is one, three, minus one. This is zero. So two twice of this is subtract from this. So this is four minus six. Is minus two. Okay, one minus minus two is three. Okay. Let's divide this by minus two, so this becomes one. This becomes minus three over two. And go one more step backwards. This is one. Uh, so three times this should be multi subtracted from this one. This is zero, zero, one. So three times this, subtract from this, this is minus 1 plus 9 over 2 and minus 3 over 2. So what is this? This is telling us that 
Second equation, x2 minus 3 over 2, x, no, not x2, this is alpha. Alpha 2 minus 3 over 2, alpha 3 is equal to 0. And the first one is telling us alpha 1, this is plus 7 over 2 alpha 3 is equal to 0. So alpha 1 is 3 over 2 alpha 3, alpha, alpha 2 is, alpha 1 is 7 over, minus 7 over 2 alpha 3. So how many solutions do we have? Infinitely many solutions, right? So these three vectors are linearly dependent. So we are able to find infinitely many solutions for that system of linear equation, meaning to, that satisfies this. Let's give a break and we will continue with this one. I want everybody, I want to call some of you to the board and I will see if you are able to do it. Okay? Let's break for 10 minutes. Okay, what is the interpretation of linear independence or dependence, okay? Why are we, why did we define? So Abdul Fattah asked me, what is the meaning of linear independence and linear independence? Okay, why is it important? Okay, it's a good question. Now, let's take two-dimensional vector space. We call this R2, right? And let's talk about a vector V that, uh, let's talk about a line, okay? Passing through the origin. Any point on this, we can, we can interpret as a vector, isn't it? Any point means here, it's a vector starting from the origin and ending in that point is a vector, right? Is this a vector space? Are, do these vectors, the set of these vectors form a vector space? Is it a vector space? Why? Because zero is uh, on this line, okay? If you add any two vectors on this line, let's say this one, and this one, you obtain a vector that is this one, right? Or if you take another vector, it will add to zero vector. Right? You take this and opposite side, you, it will add to this, etc. So these are, these, they, they form a vector space. Okay, if I take one vector, let's say I call this V1, if I take another vector called V2 on this one, are they linearly independent? Meaning, can I have alpha 1 V1 plus alpha 2 V2 equal to 0 without having alpha 1 alpha 2 equal to 0? Let's say this is, let's say this is 1 and 1, and this is 2 and 2, okay? Do I have any solution for this? Can you give me a solution for alpha 1, alpha 2, Abdul Fattah? Uh, alpha 1 minus 2 and alpha 2 is 1. For example, right? Mesela. <laughs> so this is alpha 1 minus 2, alpha 2 equal to 1 is a solution. Any other solution? Can you give me another solution? Alpha 1 is 2. Okay, alpha 1 is 2. So how many solutions do we have? Infinitely many solutions we have, right? Okay, good. So any vector, so in this one-dimensional vector space, you only have one vector that can be linearly independent, right? So you cannot have, it's obvious, isn't it? It's obvious from here. We will prove this later on. We'll talk about matrices and columns of matrices and column spaces, etc., and then we will have a formal proof of this. But it's clear that in a one-dimensional vector space, 
This is, by the way, this is called a one-dimensional vector. It is, you parameterize it with two, two coordinates, right? This is v is x and y, right? You have two parameters for it, but what do you have? You have a relationship between x and y. What, what is that? In this case, y is equal to x. Last week, I did another example on this one, if you remember. You had x and y, and there was a relationship between x and y, right? Here is another example of it. So this is again, in this vector space that x and y satisfy this quantity, this is again becomes a one-dimensional vector space. All of the points <laughs> on this line. If I had this line, by the way, is this a vector space? Why? Zero. zero. Good. So zero is not on this, right? Zero is not a part of this vector space. This is like the last example I did in the previous class, when you have a solution of ax equal to b, it would be something like this. So this is not a vector space. So we all, for a subspace, this we will call this a subspace, for a subspace to be a vector space, okay, it has to pass through the origin. The line pass through, pass through, has to pass through the origin. Okay. Now, Oh, it's gone. It's garbage. How about in R2? If I take two vectors, V1 and V2, like this, are these linearly independent? Meaning, can you have Alpha v1, alpha 1 v1 plus alpha 2 v2 equal to 0 without having alpha 1 and alpha 2 equal to 0. Can you just have a multiple of these and just somehow cancel the other one? No, right? You cannot. So because these, these two vectors, they will form any linear combination of these, you will just add them vector addition, right? This will for, they, you can just by taking linear combination of these things, you can fill the entire two-dimensional space. So all this plane will be filled with these things, okay? As a matter of fact, later on, we will call this a basis. So in an n-dimensional space, if you have a set of n linearly independent vectors, they span the entire n-dimensional space, and they are called a basis. Okay, we will we will lead to that, but this question requires that I have to mention that. Okay. So, if I give you a set of vectors and they are not linearly independent, that means they. <coughs> Some of those vectors in that set, it could be one or more of it, can be written in terms of the other vectors, a linear combination of the other vectors. I don't know if it is now clear. Okay? In this case, for example, when you have these three vectors, okay, so you have one, Two. This is x one, three four, so I have to bring down my scale. It's one, two, okay. It is this vector, so. And the other one is minus one, one. So let me just do them separately like this. So this is what this is telling you is that these three vectors are linearly dependent, meaning any one of them can be 
written as a linear combination of the other two. Okay, you can find alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 such that. This one is alpha times some alpha times this and some other alpha times this added together will give you this one. Or you can solve this in terms of this. So any one of these two will span the entire two-dimensional vector space. That's what it means. So you can take any one of these two vectors, linear and independent vectors, as the basis for two-dimensional vector space. That's what it means. So in two-dimensional vector space, what is a subspace? Subspace is a subset of a linear vector space that by itself it is it satisfies a it's, it's a linear vector space okay and it's a subset of the other uh, vector space for example the example I gave you R2 this is R2 this is the two dimensional space right all the vectors in this one okay all of these infinitely many two-dimensional vectors, they form R2, this two-dimensional linear vector space. But I gave you an example where this is y is equal to x. This line where is determined like that is a subspace of that. Why is that? It has zero. Uh, it's, it's a closed set, meaning if you add two vectors in this set, you obtain another vector in that set. Any vector has an additive inverse. And any linear combination of vectors in this one, they will always be on this line. So it is a linear vector space. What is another subspace other than this? Do you have other, other than having a line, what other subspaces do you have in two-dimensional vector space? Yes. Zero vector is also a subspace, right? So it's just a vector space that has only one vector, but it satisfies all properties. So therefore, it's a, any other one? Excuse me? No, no, this, I'm talking about R2. In R2, what other do you have? You, the, the vector space itself is also a subspace, right? So you have, the, the entire vector space is a subspace. It's, it's also a part of the itself, right? Zero, the zero vector is a subspace. And any line passing through the origin is a subspace. How about in three-dimensional space? In R3. So in R3, of course, it's x, y, z. You have, so V is equal to X, Y, Z. You have these, okay? What kind of subspaces we can talk about in this R3? Can you give me some examples? For example, any line passing through the origin, is this a, it is a subspace, right? So give me a formula for a line in R3. Origin. Hmm? Origin. So, so let me write. So give me a line, a formula for a line. Let me write. OK? It's just a vector. That's, that's a vector, right? For example, if I have x plus y plus z equal to 0, for example, what is this? So summation of x plus y plus z is equal to 0. So this, is, this shows you what? A line. a line or a plane. So it is, it is a subspace, isn't it? So 0, 0, 0 satisfies this. What else? So all the, all the x, y, z's that satisfy this, their addition will also satisfy this, right? So if you have x1 plus y1 plus z1, x2 plus y2 plus z2, they satisfy this. You add them up, x1 plus x2, 
y1 plus y2, z1 plus z2 is equal to 0 plus 0. So they all satisfy. So this also form a first safety. So in n dimensional space, you will have lower dimensional subspaces. All of them will pass through the origin. They will be a plane. High For example, in a 10 dimensional space, let's say you have a five dimensional subspace. So what is it? It's a plane, right? It's a plane, but multi-dimensional. We cannot imagine what it is, how it looks. It's something if we cannot visually represent what it means. But it is a subspace. We call it a high dimension, a multi-dimensional plane. It's a subspace of uh, of the ten-dimensional uh, space. Okay, now let's talk about column space. Then you have a x equal to b. Let's say let's just talk about a b like one, two, four, and. 3, 3, 1, okay? And x is x1 and x2. When we talk about ax, that means 1, 2, 4, 3, 3, 1, x1 and x2. When we look at this, these are like two vectors, right? In three-dimensional space, we have two vectors here. These are two column vectors in R3. And the result will be what? What will be the dimension of this? Is in R2 or so this is solution is in R2. We have x1 and x2, but this is going to be where? R3, R3 right? So this is going to be B1, B2, B3. So for any, if I give you any x1 and x2, what does that mean? That means you are taking 1, 2, 4 times x1 plus x2 times 3, 3, 1 to obtain b1, b2, b3. So you are taking linear combination of these two vectors in three-dimensional space, right? 1, 2, 3, so this is x, y, z, let's say, 1, 2, so something like this, okay? I'm not good at plotting these things. Whatever, okay? <laughs> something like this. This is one vector, and this is another vector, so 3, 3, and 1. This is another vector, let's say, or let's say here, like this. Okay, you are taking linear combination of these two vectors, and you obtain, for every different linear combination, you obtain another vector, right? So you think of all possible linear combination of these things. So think of all real numbers, x1 and x2, anything you can imagine. All those linear combinations, they form a vector space, okay? Do they form a vector space? Let's have a look at it. Do they, do they form a vector space? All linear combination of this. So I'm taking that this three by two matrix. This is three by two, isn't it? Three, three by two. So it's three rows and two columns. So I look at the columns of this matrix as vectors in R3. So can I form a vector space based on these two columns, okay? By taking linear combination of these, okay? X, so it is multiplying this with x like in a x equal to b. We are used to that, right? This is now interpretation of that. So system of linear equation can be interpreted as taking the linear combination of the columns of a and mapping them into a b, okay? You take x1 and x2, Multiply them with the column vectors and add them up to obtain another 
vector in three-dimensional space. So do these vectors form a vector space? Using these two vectors, can I form a subspace of R3? Can I? OK? So how do I check that? Hey, huh, Ibrahim, can I? OK. How do I obtain zero vector? What is, how, is zero vector a part of that set? Huh? Yes. Why? How do I obtain that? What? No. So how do I have it? Equal to zero. So x1 and x2, so there is a linear combination, which is x1 equal to x2 equal to zero that will give me that. Good. OK. And how about if I have, if I have any vector, OK, b1, b2, b3, can I obtain the minus of that, that when they add, I add them together, I will get the zero vector, for example. Can I? Of course, I just take minus x1 and minus x2, and it will give me that one, right? So this set of vectors that are obtained by taking linear combinations of the columns of the A matrix, they form a subspace, OK? This is a homework. You should do this, OK? So this is a subspace. Let me ask you a question. Can I obtain any B by linear, taking linear combination of these two vectors? OK, be careful. Ah, Abdul Fattah, you, don't, you didn't listen. <laughs> if I take any, any, so what I talked about so far is that you just take these two columns, OK? and take any x1 and x2, take any linear combination if you want, you will obtain a three-dimensional vector, another vector, right? Take just linear combination of these two vectors. It will give you x1 times the first column, x2 times the second column will give you another vector, right? Can I just take any b1, b2, b3? And can I find x1 and x2 to solve for b1, b2, b3? For any b1, b2, b3. For any b1, b2. Why not? This is like the quiz question, right? So this is, you have three. You, you, you want to be able to adjust three parameters OK? And you just take all these three. This is given. Everything is given. You have three equations and two unknowns. So too many restrictions, right? So only special Bs can be solved for, OK? So you can find solution x1 and x2 for only a set of Bs, not for every B, right? What, does, what, are, what are those b's? b1, b2, b2. That vector has to be in the subspace of what? Column subspace, right? So this is called, this set of vector is called C of A. This is column space of A. This is the subspace obtained by taking linear combinations of columns of the matrix A is called column space of A. So for this equation to have a solution, you have to have B has to be an element of this. OK? So not any B. For, not for any B you will have a solution for this. OK? Can you give me a candidate for B1, B2, B3 for which this will have a solution? OK? Who wants to give me a candidate? For what B? Give me an example. OK. 4, 5, 5. B1. 4, 5, 5. Good. Why is that? Because if you take x1 and x2, it's uh, 
One month. Yeah. What's your name? Emir. Good, Emir. Yes. So if you take, if for example, B is 455, five, OK? It has a solution. X1 and X2 is 1-1, one, one, right? Anybody else? What, what else could I take B? That's trivial solution. That's always true, right? So X1, X2 is 0. Other than that. But thanks you for saying that. So, okay, yes? 5, 7, 9, X1 equals 2. X1 is equal to 2. Yeah. X2 uh, is 1. Okay, 5, 2. So yes, absolutely. So how many different solutions I can find like this? Infinitely many, right? So I could also have 1, 2, 4, right? The second, the second side could be 1, 2, 4. What would be the solution that in that case? 1 and 0. It could be 3, 3, 1. In that case, it would be 0 and 1. It could be like 1 and minus 1 would give me minus 2, minus 1, and minus 3, for example. OK? So, but this should not mislead you that I can take any B there. OK? Let's just take any B and try our luck. Try, let's try to solve this. We know how to solve system of linear equations. Right? Let's see that something can go wrong. So let's do an example. So we have 1, 2, 4, 3, 3, 1, OK? So let's take B like 1, minus 1, and 2. I'm just trying my luck, OK? Let's see. So this is A, and this is B. So AX is equal to B. Let's see if this has a solution for this B. I just picked it randomly, OK? Let's perform Gaussian elimination. So this is our pivot. So 1, 3, 1. This is twice this subtracted from this one, 0. So 6. So this is minus 3. And twice this is 2 minus 3. And this is 4 times that should be subtracted from here. This is 0. So 12. 1 minus is minus 11. 4, 2 minus 4 is minus 2, right? So let's divide this by minus 3. So this becomes 1. Let's perform our operation. This becomes 1, 3, 1, 0, 1, 1. This is 0. This is 0. This is? Uh, minus 2, uh, so it is 9, OK? So this means 0 uh, x2 is equal to 9, right? Last equation. This equation means that. This means this is x2 is equal to 1. This means x1 plus 3 x2 is equal to 1. So, does it have a solution? No. As you see, not for every B. So you will not be able to find linear combination of the, these two columns that will give you uh, this right-hand side. Okay. So therefore, only this system of linear equation will have solution only when this the right-hand side is in the column space of C. So what is column space of, again, a matrix? Is the space that is formed by taking all possible linear combinations of columns of A. OK? For example, if I, so if I take two columns here, so it looks like what is the dimension of this column space? It looks like it's two, right? Does it have to be two always when you have two columns? For example, if I had A is equal to 1, 2, 3, and 2, 4, 6, what is 
the column space of this, right? The column space of this is taking the all linear combinations of first column and second column, right? But how many are these linearly independent? Are these linearly independent? Did we answer that question? We did not answer that question. Implicitly, we assume they are linearly independent, right? Let's see if they are linearly independent. Let me go back to this question and solve it here. Alpha times first column, one, two, three, plus beta times three, three, one, equal to zero vector, right? So alpha plus three beta is equal to zero. Two alpha times three beta is equal to zero. Three alpha times beta is equal to zero. So this tells you beta is equal to minus three alpha. You substitute here two alpha plus three minus three alpha is equal to zero. So that means minus seven alpha is equal to zero. Alpha is equal to zero. Beta is equal to zero. So that's the only solution. So therefore, those two are linearly independent. If, if they are not linearly, we call them linearly dependent, OK? Anything that is not any set. Can you talk about linear independence of a vector? No, right? Linear independence is defined for a set of vectors, OK? So dependence means I depend on you, you depend on me. So I cannot talk about dependence when I'm alone. So depending is between a group. So let's talk about these two vectors, OK? This is v1, this is v2, right? So alpha v1 plus beta v2. So it is alpha 1, 2, 3 plus beta 2, 4, 6, 0, 0, 0. How many solutions does this have? So the first one will give you alpha plus 2 beta is equal to 0. Second one, 2 alpha plus 4 beta is equal to 0. 3 alpha plus 6 beta is equal to 0. From here, you see that alpha is equal to minus 2 beta. Okay, This also gives you alpha is equal to minus 2 beta. And this also gives you alpha is equal to minus 2 beta. So as long as alpha... You take alpha my equal to minus 2 beta, uh, it's, you have a solution. Therefore, you have only one linearly, you have only one vector. Okay, this, you, these two vectors are linearly dependent. Okay? If you were to perform uh, Gaussian elimination on this, what would you get? You take one, two. 0, 0, 0, 0, right? So you have only one pivot here. Here, if you were to perform a Gaussian elimination on this one, what do we get? 1, 2, 4, 3, 3, 1. We already did that there, right? So what is this? 1, 3, 0, minus 3, and this is 0. Minus 11, what was it? Minus 11, right? And we continue one more. So we have, this is pivot number one. This is now pivot number two. So we go to second column. We want to make this one, three, zero. Let's divide it minus three again. This is one, so this is zero, zero. Okay? Number of pivots in a matrix is called the rank of a matrix. Okay, we will talk about all these things next week in more details. Next week we will put everything very nicely together. Okay, so this is this has rank two. Why? When we perform Gaussian elimination, we have two non-zero pivots here. Okay, there we have only one pivot. This has rank one. And the rank of the matrix will give you also the dimension of the column subspace. So the dimension of a column subspace is equal to the rank of the 
rank of the matrix that you are using its column to generate this subspace, okay? So let's do another example. So let's take AX, one, one, two, two, one, three, three, one, four, four, one, five, X one, X two, X three, B one, B two, B three, and B four. Okay. Again, this column space of A is is the is defined is defined as all as the set set of all possible linear combinations of columns of A, okay? So if you call this A is equal to uh, V1, V2, V3 here. So this is, this is going, this, all of the vectors are defined as alpha V1 plus beta V2 plus gamma V3, okay? You just take all possible linear combinations, alpha, beta, gamma being all of the uh, real numbers will form this subspace, okay? This is strongly related to, let's see. So when we talk about now, can we find the solution of this system of linear equation for any Bs? We cannot, right? We learned it from the previous example. So it has to be, so B has to be a member of column space of A for the system of linear equation to have any solution. Of course, I'm saying any solution because it can have no solution, one solution, or infinitely many solutions, as you, as you know from previous experience we had. Okay. So, what is the dimension of this vector space? No, it is, it is a subspace, right? It's this, this vector space is a subspace of four dimensional, it's a subspace, CA, CA is a subspace of R4, right? But is it four dimensional? So we will look at the rank. So let's look at the rank of this matrix. So what do we do? We again go back to Gaussian elimination. It's such a useful method, right? It's like aspirin. It's good for any sickness. You have a headache, you use it. You have Heart problem, you use it. You have any problem, you use aspirin, right? This is like Gaussian elimination is like aspirin. It is good for any sickness. So we take A is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's 
perform Gaussian elimination on this, meaning in, implicitly what are we doing? We are just trying to solve this, right? We want to see, because performing Gaussian elimination means multiplying this with some matrices from the left that corresponds to taking a multiple of a row, subtracting from other, uh, another row, or multiplying a row with any number, etc. that we talked about in details. So, with, so this is different from zero, therefore our first pivot is this one, 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 two. So multiply this with two, subtract it from here. So this is zero, this becomes minus one. So three minus four is minus one. And this is multiplied, it's three, this is zero, minus two, and this is, so this is three, so six minus two. This is multiplied with four subtracted from here, multiplied, so this is minus three, and this is minus three. Okay, so just multiply all of these with minus ones, okay? So we go to the second column now, okay? So this is non-zero, we can use it as a pivot, right? Now continue our Gaussian elimination, zero, one, one, this becomes zero, 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 okay? So you have rank two. Number of pivots give you the rank of the matrix. So even if it has three columns, four rows, it has just two linear independent columns. This is beautiful, isn't it? So easily you can get this, okay? Okay. So, this is the rank of a matrix. So let me write it, rank of a matrix <coughs> is the number of non-zero pivots in Gaussian elimination. So the dimension of the subspace will be what? Okay? It will be two. So the dimension of, it's because basically we have here two linearly independent vectors, okay? So we have three columns, but this, look at this third column. It is like, what? How can you write it in terms of the first two ones? So this is, if you add this first two columns, you obtain the third one, right? So one plus one is two. Two plus one is three. Three plus one is four. See? So therefore, this, this column, so if you were to check whether these are linearly independent or not, using our method, right? We did, we did it already, I guess. No, we didn't. For this one, we didn't, okay? You would obtain that alpha equal to one, beta equal to one. So gamma is equal to minus alpha minus beta. Right? It would give you that summation would make zero. Instead of, let me write this down so that everybody understands. So let's take this V1, V2, V3. So alpha V1 plus beta V2 plus gamma V2, V3 is equal to zero. I want to find the solution of this. Okay? So without going into details, if I take minus V1, minus V2, plus V3. <coughs> huh, Abdul Fattah, what happens? If I take this, 
Is this, set, is this equal to zero? Ibrahim, is it equal to zero? Right? So I have a solution. So it is alpha, beta, gamma. If I have, even if I have one solution, that means these are linearly dependent, right? So I already found the solution by just inspection, because that's how I wrote it. So this, these two, I just take minus of this, minus of that, and plus of that. They add, add up to zero vector, OK? So therefore, these are linearly dependent. So the column space of this has dimension two. So the rank of it will determine the dimension of the column space, OK? Rank of the matrix will determine the dimension of the column space. The next thing is the null space. So AX equal to 0. The set of set of X's that satisfy AX equal to 0 are called the null space. Is it a null space? Is it a space? Is it a vector space? All of the vectors that satisfy this. Is it a vector space? OK? Why yes? Again, we have been through this several times. Does it have a zero vector? Meaning x equal to 0 satisfies this. Good. If I have an x, a x equal to 0, and if I have a y, a y equal to 0, do I have that a x plus y? Is this satisfied? Is this satisfied? So if I have two solutions and I add them up, would they also satisfy this one? They will because of matrix multiplication property, right? Ax plus y is equal to Ax plus Ay. Since this is equal to 0, this is equal to 0. That means the result is equal to 0. Therefore, their linear combination is also a solution of the same equation. So therefore, this forms a subspace. So the null space is called null space of A. OK? In this case, CA, CA, OK? CA is what? CA is a subspace of what? R4, right? It's a subspace of four-dimensional space. It's a two-dimensional. This example gives you a two-dimensional subspace of four-dimensional vector space. How about null space for the same thing? OK, if I have for the same matrix. So what, what can I say? This is subspace of what? R4? X, these X vectors, where do they live in? Which, which space are they in? Four dimensional, one dimensional, three dimensional, six dimensional, what is their dimension? X1, X2, X3, right? Three dimensional, right? So it is. So now space of that A is a subspace of a three-dimensional real vector space. Column space of that A, so column space is determined by the columns of A. Null space is determined by the axis, the linear combination of A's. OK, so it is three-dimensional. Null space of A is a three-dimensional is a subspace of a three-dimensional real vector space. And 
column space of A is subspace of four dimensional real vector space. Let's stop here and next week we will try to wrap this up. <laughs>